So welcome back everyone to another podcast. ਇਹ ਪੋਡਕਾਸਟ ਦੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੱਸਦੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਬਹੁਤ ਘੱਟ ਸੀਗਾ ਯੂ ਵਿਲ ਸੀ ਬਾਈ ਦਾ ਲੈਂਥ ਸੋ ਯਾ ਅਮਨ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਦ ਗੈਸਟ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਡੀਜੇ ਗਾਡ ਇਜ਼ ਹੇਅਰ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਪੁੱਛਾਂਗੇ ਹਾਊ ਵਾਸ ਯੂਰ ਟੋਰਾਂਟੋ ਟੂਰ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਆਰ ਦ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਔਨ ਫॉर ਯੂ ਰਾਈਟ ਨਾਊ ਇਟਸ ਬੀਨ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਯਾ ਆਈ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਲਵ ਟੋਰਾਂਟੋ ਅਮ ਟੋਰਾਂਟੋ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਸੋ ਵੈਲਕਮਿੰਗ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਫਰੈਂਡਸ ਹੇਅਰ ਸੋ ਵੀਵ ਡਨ ਵਨ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵਨ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਟੁਮਾਰੋ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਯਾ ਸੋ ਬਾਈ ਟੁਮਾਰੋ ਯੂ ਮੀਨ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਡਨ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਜਨਵਰੀ ਤੇ ਯਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਚਾਈਲਡਹੂਡ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਚਾਹੋ ਜੇ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੋ ਸੋ ਯਾ ਓਕੇ ਆਮ ਆਮ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਟਾਊਨ ਗਰਲ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਪੀਪਲ ਡੋਨਟ ਨੋ ਥੈਟ ਆਈ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਲਾਈਕ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਬਿਗ ਸਿਟੀ ਵਾਈਬਸ ਬਟ ਆਮ ਆਮ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਟਾਊਨ ਗਰਲ ਫਰਮ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸ ਰੂਪਰ ਇਟਸ ਅ have you ever heard of it yeah i have <laughs> okay yeah yeah so it's close to alaska there was barely any like punjabi people there actually uh, mm-hmm. there was only like two gurdwara one and then they built a second one you know how it is wow. uh so it's a very very small town uh that's where i spent you know half my life or third now and then uh moved to uh vancouver uh and so it was a little bit of an adjustment because mm. um there's a lot more punjabi people there um and so i delved more into the punjabi community and where are your parents back home from they're from uh punjab yeah yeah and actually my mom's from pune my dad's from uh nakodar area do you yeah. know nakodar yeah, 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 yeah. baba yeah. marad shah yeah. right so yeah right by there yeah uh, so, yeah so and how they, was growing up here so they immigrated to uh prince rupert like my dad had come and it, it's kind of the success story of only coming with like five dollars in his pocket you know no. he, five fact, dollars yeah, yeah my dad like you know like he had i don't know a little bit of money in his sock actually not even in his pocket when oh. he came uh oh. yeah so like nice. barely any money um he barely came to canada like you know obviously had to save a lot and uh cross over and um yeah like we're a very middle class family he was a mill worker and you know provided for his family growing up um and then we transitioned because there wasn't as many opportunities i think for kids growing up uh, there's not really any schools universities and stuff so i actually went to ubc so wow. th- that's the why they of school, yeah right? so they oh. yeah so they had to move i did a biology degree what? and oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh biology oh. and was very studious and yeah part of all like the clubs you know played basketball soccer volleyball students council grad council mm. yeah and then went to uh, UBC on a uh, science scholarship and That's so nice. yeah <laughs> How did you went into DJing? DJing. It's a long-winded story, but I know we're on a time crunch, so I'll try to simplify it. Uh but basically, uh, when I was in third year university, I went to London on a work exchange program, and uh, when I went to London, they have all these musicals and stuff, and there was a musical called Bombay Dreams, which is Andrew Lloyd Webber and A.R. Rahman like, you know, wow. his his music. So that was actually like a turning point where I was like oh my gosh I love the entertainment industry and the, you know the dancing I was always into Bollywood music growing up um my parents would always rent uh Bollywood movies so we were always exposed to Bollywood music so that was always there and then dancing as well through Bollywood okay. movies uh so yeah like when I went to this work exchange got inspired by that musical and then when I came back I was like oh my gosh I want to do everything I want to do dancing I want to try acting I want to do all of these things nice. and that's what I did and um I remember I like had an informal like casting meeting uh with a producer and he was like you know what you're so business savvy like you know I I feel <laughs> like you should <laughs> it, I was like is this a diss am I not a good enough actor <laughs> like you know you tell me to go the production route um so I decided to go the production route and uh so I became an intern worked my way up I get, became a executive assistant production associate then I went worked my way up to being an executive producer oh, on the film wow. side yeah like on the business side and I even traveled to India um, It was all English movies or whatever Yeah English movies but uh the movie that I executive produced was called Sold uh it's um it was based in Nepal like based on child trafficking so it had okay. like an award winning uh author uh, i had an oscar award winning director uh oh, so wow. it was a really strong team and i was on the business side of it so i went nice. as an executive producer on that film um and in the meantime when i i, I would go to the bay area on um 
on all these film contracts. And I had one friend who was a DJ. So every weekend I was like, okay, where is the party at? You okay. know, I want to come join. Especially in the production industry, it's it's no one. And back then, like, I feel like it was like middle age, you know, Jewish white men, like, you know, <laughs> and so I didn't States have. States was still having yeah, pretty much that. Same yeah. Culture. And I, I was like the youngest female, like producer. Uh, that to, out yeah. Of the community, really. And I came, uh, like, I went to the US on a TN visa uh, called management consultant between Bollywood and Hollywood. So oh, I got wow. up to that level in the film industry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then. The DJing side of it is, yes, like, so every weekend I would watch my friend DJ and I was like, oh my God, I want to learn. And uh, he's no more. He passed away um, because of cancer, but uh, he definitely inspired me. And I, I came back to Vancouver, learned from a female DJ. And she was like, you're so good at this. Like, you're natural at this But music. what exactly was getting you into the DJing? What exactly was something you were liking that much? I feel like, yeah, music was always kind of my savior. And it, like, I, growing up, from I feel daily like... Daily Chaos? Yeah, from Daily Chaos. I feel like you shut the world out. Mm -hmm. Music was always my escape. So like from childhood, like I'd have CDs and I, like my parents too were always into music. The, there was always music playing, even Kirtan, I would say. Like I grew up doing Kirtan. I know how to play the tabla, play you? the harmonium. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me? <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like I learned the tabla when I was eight years old and yeah, like continued for quite a few years with it as well as Kirtan. So smashing so. something was since childhood. So yeah, yeah that was always in, within me. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's where the music music element came in and just kind of ran with it and then the Bollywood was from the Bollywood movies from ever since I was young just fascinated and how was your parents reacting to it so I mean yeah, I had a biology, biology degree <laughs> yeah. Music, yeah. so I they were like finish your degree I finished my degree then I was like okay I want to take one year off right and that's where I was exploring film production and then DJing and I was doing all these like artistic things and then they were like okay so when are you going to go back to get you know your PhD you're going to become a doctor yeah. like you need to like that was the route that they always thought I would take. Um, like, I'm the same person that cried when I got my first B in university. Like, cried. Like, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. This is not fair. Life is not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, little did I know that life hands you a lot more than Bs, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, so then, uh, like, parents obviously wanted me to go back to school. but as the, But they were supportive, too. I would say it was like... Every parent, especially Punjabi parents, you know, yeah. they they want stability. They want financial stability. They, you know, there's they're a not even wrong at it. Yeah. Mm. And they're not like every parent would want their child, yeah. you know, to grow mm. up and secure have a secure you. life, yeah. secure life. And uh, so they always wanted that. But at the same time, they wanted to support me. So I, I remember my dad saying, no matter what, like, you know, I'm the here. only thing they if want you away from is drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. In this day and age, that's now. Yeah, yeah. now. It, but but so. you, again, your thing, the DJing and everything, they look into the party. Yeah. What, are they not scared of uh, drugs and stuff? My parents? Uh -huh. You know what? I think because I've always had a strong sense of self, like okay, growing Obviously getting straight A's into biology. Straight A's. They were <laughs> never concerned about me. Like, in fact, my dad always, he called me Kitabikiri, right? <laughs> he, he's like, get out, go outside. Like, you know, if, if I'm spending too much time on work or like studying or whatever I set my mind to, my dad is always the opposite. Like, go out, like, enjoy life. Life is short. Like, you need to get out more. Um, so I feel like he, they were never concerned. They might... I feel like he was definitely concerned over people drugging my drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like I yeah, like to be like, oh my gosh, somebody, you have to be very careful. Like somebody can spike your drink. So th that's always been like the main, and they still say that. Like they'll still <laughs> like that. That doesn't change. That's still there. So I feel like that's the one fear. And I mean, as I became more known, like there's few instances that were proud moments for my parents, and they felt like okay. She's like made it, you know, mm. like she's making it or made it, however you want to say it. Um, but I was like in Chandigarh and at a show and my dad was traveling uh, in India. And normally he travels the same time as me or we make sure both our trips. I go on tour to India and he goes for as a snowbird to avoid the winter. Um, and yeah, like it was a Chandigarh gig and... Uh, he went shopping, I think it was like, I don't know, Sector 70. I don't know yeah. what area it was. It was like this big shopping area in Chandigarh. And, Mall, and um, yeah, there were flyers of me everywhere. Like, wow. you know, like, mm. and, and so we're now across the world and they're seeing this, right? And then, yeah, like slowly, like I have quite a few artist friends. Do you know which year was that? 
oh my god that must have been i think that was like five years into my career so it must have been around like uh, i started like and it wasn't a song poster or something yeah. no they were f for my show so it was like everywhere like it was mm. like uh plaster that dj goddess is performing uh mm. on whatever date yeah. it must have been 2016 i think yeah around there yeah so, so yeah, it was like well into my career but it was it took them a good like i think it takes time to make it right like or however we perceive make it as into the point where our parents are comfortable so i feel like it did take like five six years before yeah. they were like okay until then they're like hey how about your bsc okay like just go back just go back you know like at least complete it. yeah because it's not an easy road and i didn't come from like an entertainment background i'm yeah. somebody that like yeah like middle class family you know like no entertainment background and made it in a yeah. way that like you know people are familiar with my name like across the globe yeah yeah and how was it like when you were learning djing and everything we'll be getting back to it how exactly was it so i learned literally in a week so from the female dj That's that i was it? saying uh so i took a week and she's like you're natural at it she's like you okay. should make pocket money while you do the produ production stuff pursue this like and i was like oh okay and i was still like at the production level i was still like I would say in the assistant level, I hadn't made it to executive producer. I was still like in that middle sort of, you know, early stages. So she's like, dude, like, you know, you should DJ. And the entrepreneurial side of me, it was like, oh my God, there's not really any big Indian female DJ exactly. Canadian. Like, so I was thinking like on as a business standpoint, and I was like, this could actually do pretty good. And and I'm passionate about it. It wasn't just like- Was, oh, it, was it even paying that good compared to the producer side? Um, I would say at that point, like I was early on. So like when you're an intern, you're not getting paid. Ex like when you're an assistant, you're, you're just not on getting paid. snacks. Yeah. Executive assistant. Yeah. Like I was living a luxurious lifestyle because my expenses were paid. I'm rolling with, you know, producers, directors, actors. Yeah. So I was living a still a lavish life, but it was like the pay wasn't that great because you're still an assistant. Like I don't you're think assistants. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like equal. And then I remember like my mentor, who was also the CEO of um, Kerner Studios, the studios I was working uh, for, he was my mentor. And I remember him saying, Jess, like, I know you're like, you're pursuing two different things at once. And he's like, you know, I think it's time to choose one. And he's like, it doesn't mean that you can't do everything, but he said, choose one path and go hard at it. And later on, you can then diversify and mm. do the other things. And he's like, get really good at that one thing. And he's like, I think that you need to be in front of the scenes mm. because I was on the production side, which is behind the scenes on the business side. So he was like, I think you really need to like be in front of the scenes. And I had big meetings in Hollywood too. Like I, I met with the top agencies. I was even thinking, okay, I can be a manager, like an it artist manager. It was all manager. happening in California or? Yeah, like California. So I was in LA, like I would travel LA, Bay Area quite a bit. And then, uh, yeah, like even these are like big executives and they're like, you, I know that you want to do the behind the scenes, but you're so like, you deserve to be in front of camera. You deserve to be like, you know, like you're, yeah, like they would say, you're going to be a star. Like, that's what they said straight up from the beginning. And so I was like, OK, let's just run with that. And now I feel like I'm fortunate because as a DJ, OK, producing music, OK, I, I'm spinning. I'm all I also get to executive produce my own music videos. So I didn't leave the film side and yeah, I'm really good at like I can it. budget I, like I can do the budget sheets. I can do, you know, line production. I could do film production. So I, it's kind of like a one stop shop kind of yeah. thing. But so still I get to do goes, everything. It goes different from country to country, right? The production costs and everything. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah and it's all about like connections too. like you meet you meet different people. Like, yeah. you know, I'm friends with different video directors and I'm like, OK, like, you know what I mean? So it's all yeah. about being resourceful yeah being resourceful as most artists are and how was your djing journey that's getting back to it so when you started it how many years did it took to you grow out your name and so that people would know well my first show was in calgary so like ragav uh he he knew that i was on the production and after how many years was then, this so that would have been 2011 was like my debut new year's eve 2011 okay. 2012 that was my debut mm -hmm. into 2012 almost 13 years ago wow yeah yeah, yeah 12 12 long, yeah, yeah like about 12 years yeah yeah so mm. it's been yeah exactly almost <laughs> it's yeah like, it's a pretty long journey yeah. yeah it has been so i mean it takes time like i feel like again so my first ever show was calgary with ragav and it was new year's eve huge audience because mm. it was uh cast like uh, telecasted in calgary and uh toronto wow. uh live telecast so i feel like that was like a big 
big break for me for my first show. It was like nerve wracking. But again, when you're with an artist, it's more press play mm -hmm. what they, what songs they want versus doing like a DJ set. So yeah. it was still, he's like, it's just press play on my songs. Like, you know, <laughs> you can do this. So I felt like, okay, I got the audience on lock of like, okay, I can handle a big audience. Now let's roll with this and practice. So I remember practicing for like three months in my bedroom, just spinning between tracks oh, what yeah. exactly do you have to practice doing the dj so i was practicing mixing between random songs because mm. like when you're djing like when you're live you know live djing you're djing between two tracks that like you know so you have to make sure you can beat match that's what it is exactly right? so making a to make matching it, a vibe of two different songs. two different songs yeah. and like now i've gotten to the level of like mixing in key which is like you know like so that even the key of the song is similar and Matching certain keys it. match wow. so like now i'm at that level where I, i'm very particular so like you know if people coming in with crests or whatnot like I, i'm very particular with my sets now so i'm like okay like i like to mix and key i'm looking at the different keys of the songs and then transitioning yeah what exactly is your dream within the djing do you want to go into the Tomorrowland or stuff like that? That would be amazing. Yeah, you know what? I feel like now that Bollywood is catching the eye of all these major DJs, like Tiesto just yeah. collaborated with Garnajla. Mm. Um, DJ Snake has been doing. He's he's always been loved by India. Dubai, he loves uh, India he, too. Yeah, like you know, scene. Magenta Rhythm and like um, Lean On. You mm. know his songs. Like, and I feel like DJ Snake is one of my idols. I feel like what he does. Is something similar to what I want to do, and I would love to bring like Bollywood music to the mainstream stage. Yeah, that's exactly you want to move to Dubai to meet them. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh uh, yeah, I did. Did you know I was moving to Dubai? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Over the we had a conversation. Right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think a lot of Canadians are moving to Dubai. Uh, there's no taxes there. It's safe, and yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like it'd be easier to kind of collaborate with people especially with the bollywood scene because you're so close yeah. um it's much That's harder to yeah. collaborate across seas like even with like Sikandar, he did his vocals in india i did mine on this side i produced the track but it was like going back and forth but we weren't able to physically sit in studio together and even mm. our shots were like and i executive produced that music video too which one with, with, it was called goddess uh with Sikandar kalong yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So how I, was it the first step when you brought in your, you s sang that song, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So how was it? Share some experience. It's so obviously I'm, it's something I'm getting used to. It's something that I need to improve. Like, you know, there's lots of, uh, cause I, I, I'm a DJ first, you know, yeah. and then I'm mm -hmm. starting to rap. So obviously it's going to take time to kind of, you know, get used to rapping and getting comfortable with my own voice, that sort of thing. Uh, but it was really fun. It was a fun experience and I feel like there's going to be a lot more coming awesome. this year. This year, you're yeah. planning anything? Yes. So planning on originals, planning on some features. Uh, I definitely want to do like a collaborative album um, with different artists. So that's something that I'll be working on this year. So globally, you have already told uh, DJ uh, whom you like. On the Punjabi side, if you come across, which singers you would like to work with? Any On news? the Punjabi side? Mm. I mean... You've already worked with Amrit Maan, yes. Gary Sandhu. Yeah. And... yeah. Um, I feel like... AP would be a great one to work with. Garn Ajla, yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, like, and I, I don't mind like newer artists too. I, I like having an eye for like new talent um, and kind of, I would like to bring them to the main stage. Yeah. So Punjabi yeah. music is mostly having the beats and everything. Being a DJ, what exactly do you like or you wish someday in Punjabi music that kind of music would be coming in? For example, trance, EDM, what sort of music do you would like to work on? Okay, um, I feel like... Like a fantasy, like a wild fantasy if you have. Well, I, I do a lot of EDM music and like now it's transitioning to like different types of house music. Uh, so I feel like I would love to experiment uh, with those sorts of beats because... Uh, those are what do well in a club, right? Like, or a club, a festival. It's like mm -hmm. you're looking at, like, when you're thinking of, like, Tiesto, David Guetta, you're looking at producing, like, club, like, you know, the faster beats that yeah. people can dance to. So that's kind of the... I feel like nice. that's what I'm known for. Like, even if you take some of... Like, if you go to my YouTube channel and listen to some remixes, you know, I've changed it into, like, a dance song. Like, if it is something that typically somebody would be cruising to, but now they're dancing to. Yeah, Punjabi yeah. music is always about dancing. Yes. 
yeah. e- otherwise it'll well, be a sad senti. song yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, sad yeah. song yeah. sad song yeah. or a dance song that's yeah. it there is no in between yeah but the tiesto and things that you're yeah. talking about it's a when a person reaches to a certain high yeah. then the <laughs> that the beat comes on so yes. yeah and I'm, i have no problem turning senti beats into uh dance tracks too i mean i did beva for imran khan and turned it into a dance track wow. right like uh and people will dance to it so they're singing and I, it's so funny because it is like an anomaly because you're like okay or oxymoron because on one side it's a senti track but on the other side um you're like dancing to it <laughs> and being a woman mix of emotions <laughs> Yeah, being a woman, yeah. uh, what hardships you have faced so far? I am this industry basically. Yeah. I feel like it's always difficult for women. As much as like I always tell this whenever I'm being interviewed, I'm like, you know, people always think, "Oh my god, it must be easier for you. You're a woman, the doors are open, you look a certain way." Born you in know, Canada. people are like, <laughs> "Yeah, people are hiring you based on your looks and whatnot." But I feel like at the end of the day to be hired over and over again by the same promoters you mm-hmm. you have to have the talent right so i feel like i always have to break the stereotype that you know i'm booking these shows and then maybe i am you know let's be real okay i booked the shows based on style whatever she looks this way i booked the shows but at the end of the day it's based on my talent that people are bringing me over and over again like we have harveer here in the studio like you know he's bringing me back right yeah. so th- there's a reason for that yeah but that's definitely a stereotype that you know needs to be broken uh yeah. because yeah like pretty girls can <laughs> can have talent <laughs> yeah and any hardship you have faced since your childhood being a punjabi and being born in canada if you if any of the canadian born kids are watching to push them well i feel like that's a little bit i i feel like it's unfair to ask that question because i am canadian born and i'm punjabi but i was kind of i was born in prince rupert which is predominantly you know non punjabi like mm-hmm. you know related so i was never raised kind of like I mean there might have been some racism but like not that much like I was raised as like a you know Caucasian kid there was no difference like oh. my parents really believed in equality and like you know we were around a circle that believed in equality so I never really had to face that many problems in that standpoint right so I mm. I feel like that might not be as applicable as maybe like I feel like you know Punjabi people coming to Canada they might be facing a lot more um mm. you know struggles yeah. and mm-hmm. Yeah, like I feel like they have a lot to face. They're they're moving here, they're moving away from their families, they're leaving everything behind. There's financial hardships here. Like I I look at some of the students and they're like working two jobs, they're going to school, like they're working yeah. around the clock and then you know they're all like living together because it's, you know, the affordability is not there. Um but I mean, if you look at like AP and you look at some of these people that have come from yeah, sure. India, Shub, yeah. and they like look how big they you know yeah, of they dreams they've achieved like it's like beyond their imagination so i feel like they're like they're live examples that you know if you continue to work and pursue your dreams that's a big thing right the biggest one to do musiala he's yeah, yeah like siddu right like prime example and like you know we were really close friends and he would say like yeah like i remember knocking on doors and like you know he just wanted to be a singer right mm. like he just wanted to sing that's all you he had to do you had a word do. with him Sorry? Yeah. You had a word with him? Yes, Tudu? yeah, we were actually really close. We were really close. Yeah. Yeah, I was like one of his first female friends, I guess you could say, in, in the, on the Vancouver side because he was yeah. always around guys. So I guess I was kind of one of the boys. Yeah. And how was with Siddu? How long did you know him? Uh quite some time actually. Uh I don't know what year it was. Uh oh my gosh. But I like when he moved to Vancouver, um that like I was part of that circle of friends that was in Vancouver. So we spent a lot of time together. Like we, me and him would play video games. Like yeah. I I've seen him churn out tracks like nobody's business. Like he 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 was a genius like in the sense of like lyrics would just roll out. He could do 2-3 songs in a day, like just Whoa. roll them oh. out. Yeah. Like he would just get in studio and he yeah, like he could just write very quickly and it just rolls out. Yeah. Like th- th- that's very rare. I feel like to find in an is, artist yeah. he, th- that's very rare. We're looking at people like Prince, like you know Prince, like he has he still has like probably a whole bunch of tracks that are like unreleased mm. and, and he passed away. If... Prince Purple Rain. You you'd have to research him, but I definitely recommend for people to find inspiration to watch uh it's the documentary of um Prince called Purple Rain. 
Okay. But you're looking like in another example, Tupac, right? Like yeah. they have so many tracks that they left behind. Imagine that like exactly. we're looking at the modern artists that can't even produce like or, or I'm not saying it's a bad thing. We're, mm -hmm. we're all equipped with a different brain and different work. You know, like we're all different human beings. Yeah. But they they work so fast in their brain and it just like turns out and that's a God's gift, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Natural talent. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And any message for the women who are watching you and want to do something which is not regular? out of their jobs and just the way you are doing yeah, yeah. well i mean I, if i can do it i feel like anybody can do it it's yeah. it's you know it's finding living examples of like finding someone that is doing what you want to do and has broken barriers right like I, i entered a male dominated industry and broke through and still breaking through i would say i'm consistently breaking through it doesn't get any easier i feel like your challenges are there's always going to be challenges but it's about continuously being pers like persevering through yeah. yeah and just keep pushing i feel like if you have a dream follow it and you know act on it i a lot of people dream and they they don't act on it yeah. Yeah. right so yeah at the end a pretty stereotypical question where do you want to see yourself after 10 years 10 years <laughs> <laughs> happy retired on a beach <laughs> <laughs> career wise basking I mean. in sun <laughs> with my record label running on its own <laughs> so yeah uh, i would like to open my own record label so that's something that i'm working on um musically launching other artists maybe even opening like a management company so kind of stepping more behind the scenes mm -hmm. and so opening up a different uh, different businesses and and launching other artists giving them the opportunity that you know i created for myself but for them it would be like i could give them those opportunities that's pretty nice yeah yes yeah, so, so kind of paying it forward <laughs> so yeah i know we are time yes yeah. so. yes I, i have one last yeah question. no problem <laughs> okay so your name dj goddess so yes. i just want to know where does it come from it's very nice and picky like you, you know it's a very sparkling kind of thing <laughs> well so. i always say i never mind a guy calling me goddess right? <laughs> so yeah. self proclaimed yeah uh but actually the real reason why i called myself goddess was i wanted something female empowering and i wanted to create a movement where you know everyone like i feel like every girl should be like a goddess you know like just like how they say in sikhi you have core princess mm -hmm. so i wanted it like a goddess movement where you know women um Yeah, women could feel empowered. Like when yeah. you think goddess, you think empowered woman. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's, that's, that's what that's I... pretty good answer. Yeah. So at last, we would like to know how was it? I know it's pretty time restricted. And yeah. Yeah. Still. No, this is amazing. I felt like I talked a lot <laughs> versus. <laughs> I gave very in-depth answers, so hopefully Trust you guys me, enjoyed it. I, which we okay, done. <laughs> okay, you haven't done anything like this. Never. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Then. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, we, we, this is okay. a new experience for us. Yeah. And I think amazing. you learned a lot more about me. Exactly. exactly. I think that's why I wanted to do. You know, I decided to come onto this podcast. Is uh, I think people don't know like the real me. They see this like yeah. diva, like yeah. you know this other person on Instagram. So this is where I get to be like myself and people to get. To know me a little bit better and, and at least guys... uh, now we know you yeah. planning to move to dubai yeah that's maybe. the only thing which we know <laughs> that's like the number one thing that everybody yeah. wants to know which artists are moving to dubai yeah right so yeah so at the end if you want to say anything to your fans no thanks so much for having me on your show and uh, yeah like i hope that the fans can resonate and connect with me and uh yeah i'd love to connect with them as well um you know i i make this music for all of you guys so i hope you love what i do yeah how was it Aman? Yeah, it was great thank you yeah. so much for coming yeah it's thank you career, yeah. and Thanks. so yeah guys it's not the end it's <laughs> goodbye for until the next time and to see it they dekh de support kar de so yeah hor bhi artists like aa mange so see you guys thank you bye thank you